Hello, once again, welcome to Audio Tech. I'm delighted to have you back on my channel. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. And also, if you've already subscribed, remember to like this video and share with your friends. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a database in PHP Madme. So, how do we create a database in PHP Madme? We can use a SQL statement to create a database, or we can just go ahead and then create it straightforward using graphical interface available within the php madme so let's say we want to create a database and then add tables to it how can we go about it so if i can just click on this new button over here i can just click on this new button and then give the name of the database and click on create or i can just go to sql and then we can write sql statements i'm going to have a series of videos on SQL, that's structured query languages, how to communicate with your database, how to create database tables and all that. So subscribe if you if you're interested in database and learn database techniques and tricks. I'm going to have everything right here on this channel. So I can go ahead and create a database using the SQL command. After creating the database, I'm going to focus everything on using the graphical interface. I'll be in subsequent lessons, I'm going to focus more on the SQL aspect, so how we can use the structured query language. So let's create a database for our students. So we can go ahead and say create. So use a create keyword and say database. And then you give the name to that database. So let's say students. So this is basically the name of our database. So when you click on go over here, it will create your database. So you can see MySQL return an empty query. So you can see it has run about 0 0.100 seconds. So you can see our student database now being displayed over here. So basically this is how to create a database using the basic SQL statement. We can go ahead and then create a database also just click on the new button over here at the left hand corner. And then I can also say, let's say employees. So this is also another form of creating a database. So I just give the name employees and click on create. So this is just a graphical way. So database employee has been created. So basically this is just a simple way of creating a database. Once you create a database, you now have the option to add tables to those database. And before you can add a table to a database, that database must be selected. So you realize that employee's database has been selected now. And then it's giving option to start creating tables. And that is the next thing I'm going to do. So let's use our student database. So before you can use a table, a database, you have to first select it. So I'll select this database this way. It has been opened now, so no table found in a database. And that is true because we've not yet created any table. We can use the SQL command to create the tables within our database, which is a bit complex, which I'm going to deal with in another video. So subscribe. And if you want to know more about SQL, I'm going to talk about DML, that's data manipulation language, DDL, data definition language. And we'll look how to use the create, how we can use the create statement, the author table, and different other options, how we can delete, can drop table. I'm going to show you everything on this channel. So I have a lot of lessons coming that will be of interest to you. So you need to subscribe in order to do that. So we're going to create a table within our database. So let's say, we have a student's database. That's the, the name of our database. So our first table, let's say we have, we want to create a table called users. So let's say that is it. And we say number of columns. So when we say columns, columns are basically, when we say columns, they are basically the vertical option for our table. And I'm going to describe that. So we can have, a student can have a username, a student can have, email a student can have date of birth and all that so that is the column you are referring to so let's assume these users want them to take let's say up to five columns so you can indicate the number of columns you want then we click on go so when you click on go this way it's going to create that particular table and that's going to be under our database so our main database is having a name called what students and now within the student we're going to have users so you can see we have our database now set up for us so now what we're going to do is that we're going to set up our database and I'm going to show you some few things you need to know. Basically, a database needs to have a key called a primary key. And a primary key is a key that basically identifies the table. It's a unique key for your table that uniquely identifies that table. So let's say for instance, we want a student ID. So you can see, we can say just underscore ID. So every student should have a unique ID. I want that student ID to be uniquely generated, that's auto-generated. No student will have the same ID. So we can we have the data types, 
which basically the id is going to be in numbers we'll leave it as integer and integer is having a default value basically it's going to be 11 so i'm going to go i'm not going to state the value by here and because this is going to be a primary key we need to add some few options so we'll come here and we are not going to check this because primary key cannot be now when we say now means it's not going to have any value so we want there should be a primary key and then over here under the index column we are going to set it as what primary key i'll talk about the rest unique index and then the rest later on but we want the user that's the primary key for the student to be so you can see so it's going to make the student id a primary key which is going to be what unique so i'll just click on go because i want that to be a primary key and what we have by this ai simply may auto increment what this means is that anytime we add a number a new student automatically is going to increase the index number so if we have one the next student is going to have two the next student is going to have three and that order so we check this place so it's going to be auto incremented okay so that is all we need for this table the rest will leave them as it is and let's say we want the student to have first name so let me type it and the first name we're going to select a data type called vacha so vacha simply means a data type that holds both letters and numbers so let's say we don't know the length of the student name so we can say 30 for the student name every other thing we're going to leave it as it is because for the now column we will not check that because we want the student to type a name then let's say we also want the last name of the student last name. let me leave at the comment section if you don't know how to store let me know at the comment section if you don't know how to install php admin i'll show you how to do that we can either go with the zamp or the warm server i'm currently using the warm server over here I have one server i'm using this running you can use exam to achieve the same result so if you don't know how to do that just give me a comment leave a comment at the comment section and i'll do a video on how to install worm or zamp and then set up your php admin so we're going to set our last name also as what voucher and the last name to set it as what 30. and i also want the student to want to take their id okay we want to pick the email so we'll pick email as well and the email will set it as what voucher as well we don't know the length so let's put it around 50 maybe somebody's email may be very long and then finally maybe we want to pick the date the student register so registration so let's say registration date so remember when you're giving the name to your database it should be one word okay there should be one way so you can just go ahead and then just type let's leave it as it is so registration i think my spelling is wrong so registration what dates and that is going to be want to pick the dates and time that this has been done so we can use another data type called date time okay we're going to pick a date time for this one so once we are done with everything we've set up our table columns and everything just click on what save so we're going to save this let's just save this and it's processing our request and once it's done it will be saved successfully and i will have one table over here so you can see we now have users table if you come under student we should be having a table called users so you can see we now have users table and this is a structure of the users table you can click on that then to give you the structure of the users table so the table we've created We'll be able to check the structure okay so this is the student id the first name last name email registration date we have everything set up then we we'll go to the structure of the table and then we can see everything now we can see we have a key attached to the student what id which signifies that it's what a primary key you can see the primary showing over there and then we have the integer we have the data type we're assigned to every particular column okay and then we have our primary key set to what auto increment so anytime we add a student it automatically generates a value for the student and we can change and then we can drop this table when you drop this table it's more or less like you are deleting it from the system okay so we have the first name last name email registration date and every other thing has been set up for us i just want to show you how to create a database and then add tables to it and my other lessons that will be coming up what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to insert records into this table how you can create more than one table and then connect them and add records to them and delete records as well so there's a lot coming up and then i also show you how to and i also show you how you can export this database to 
another project you can export it and use it as well so there's a lot coming up i'm going to show you right here on this channel so remember to subscribe so you don't miss any of my upcoming tutorial thank you thank you so much me thank you so much for watching this short video on how to create a database using phpmadmin till i come your way again stay tuned and continue visiting our bye bye